Welcome to Artifact Adventure, just adjusting it a little bit. We are attempting to do some post-commentary here using a uh, uh, some actual editing software and some post-commentary recording. Uh, this is about an 18-minute video, as you can see, and eh, it's mostly a tech practice and learning stuff like uh, how to do wipes. Uh, so this is our artifact adventure. Uh, right here I'm turning in some little goblin guys for awards, rewards. Uh, artifact adventure is an interesting little JRPG throwback, as you can see, um, with an interesting magic component. Uh, magic is basically done by uh, picking up artifacts and using them, keying them to specific characters. And that's the last wipe you're going to see because I, I know how to do it and got sick of it. As you can also see, there's teleporting items to go to different parts of the world map to save on backtracking, especially when walking is so slow. And now we're in a little sub-area. Uh, I'd never been here before. I was just exploring using the right hand wheel for mazes and a fight. Uh, nothing too terrible. Uh, as you can see, it's good old fashioned Final Fantasy 1 JRPG combat. Uh, those rock piles basically, it's um, uh, spells or nothing. And then you get the little experience, and away you go. What am I doing here? Oh, I'm unequipping the Dirk because the monk has a chance of doing two attacks if he doesn't have a weapon equipped. I'm, you know, I'm learning this sort of thing, and I'm learning the game while I'm doing it. And we've got Tapirs, which is a really weird thing to be fighting in a game, right? I'm not used to seeing tapirs in a fight. And as you can see there, uh, Light of Retribution work. It hits everything of a type, uh, but apparently doesn't do squat against normal critters like tapirs, tapirs, whatever they are. I currently have the music off because being an old-school JRPG, there isn't really an options menu. The background music has one volume setting, which is loud. And I think... is this the fight? No. I'm in an area that's well advanced to where I should be. But, you know, that's how you do it. You explore. I gotta say, I, I like the art. The art is creative. And I don't really miss the whole uh, little guy taking two steps forward to wiggle his sword and then taking two steps back. The Focusing more on the enemies is better. And that was me, I believe, checking how much experience I needed to level because when you gain a level, your health and magic are completely refreshed. And more goblins. See, you can fail to escape. And I got a couple people that are pretty banged up. Oh, there's the monk. And poor Chuck. I've got an, got an artifact that is supposed to help you not die, but yeah, this is, I think, where I decide to bail, because I've got no way to heal him. Yeah, smoke bomb, you auto-run from the next combat. So this is me trying to get the hell out of dodge, and here we see the smoke bomb automatically run. Don't have to do anything. 
And I don't quite make it out, as I recall. Yeah. Big old bird. Mike. Now, I thought he was going to auto-resurrect with full health, but I think that only happens if the entire party wipes. Uh, with this one, yeah, he he's dead. And I can't use Spirit of Steel. Despite my attempts. My numerous attempts. But, luckily... Anyone can use this thing. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Oh, I think I was confused. I was going to go to the other town where it's cheaper to hook up at the inn to rest, to heal, but that town does not have a working witch doctor. Stuff's expensive. And... My, yeah, you can probably tell. If you uh, press W, you cycle through who's leading the party. And see there, now Mike is fully healed, as opposed to Chuck that came up with one. So I guess that's the artifact, so maybe that's the only way it works. I'm not sure. But now we're leaving town. Yep. And we teleport to... Wherever that is. And incidentally, the reason it's just in a little window like this is because that's all you can do. Um, you can't adjust the size of the window. You can't make it full screen. You can't shrink it, stretch it, do anything. It's that aspect ratio and only that aspect ratio. Yeah, there's the witch doctor that can't do anything. So, uh, basically, I've got my desktop wallpaper set to black, and I'm just recording the upper left quadrant of that monitor. And now I'm just kind of walking around, you know, doing stuff, having an artifact adventure. I wanted to get some recording done. I was kind of winging it and just how long I'd have it last. And, okay, that's where we were, and that failed miserably. So, where are we going? Oh, that's right, we found another town. And someone in here will have a map that lets us teleport there. And we can't afford that. That key, you buy a key, you unlock a door. So if you want all three, and it was, what, 5,000 each? You need 15,000 gold to get all three artifacts. So I was just seeing what they were to figure out how many I wanted. I believe I want two. And like any good JRPG, you talk to everybody. The Swamp King, by the way, is uh, who we're supposed to be killing. And yes, this game has a day-night cycle. There's also a spell that switches it between day and night. Um, or if you just walk around long enough, it will eventually change to a different... To It'll get darker. It's not just day-night. There's it, You'll have dusk and dawn. It's, it's kind of surprising. That's not too typical, I don't think. And that's saving the game. Uh, however, it seems... I think that only counts as saving the game when you quit. Because if we were to go out and get like a new sword and then die, we'd go back to the last place we did our journal. We would still have the sword. And Mike would be at one hit point. Or, or maybe full because of the artifact, but he would be at one hit point and the other three would still be dead and have to be resurrected. So, uh, if you die, you don't completely lose your progress. You just have to pay. 
Which, as you saw earlier, gets really expensive. Everything's expensive. Uh, it, I, I got a 5,000 uh, gold front for accepting a quest. It was a quest to p that would pay 10,000, and they gave me 5,000 up front. I didn't do the quest, I just took the money and ran. Which hasn't seemed to have an impact on me yet. That's a resurrector. This is a dude. Quest giver. A lot of people talking about the mine. I really don't think we're ready to go to the mine. Guess we make a fire sword. This is me trying to equip it. But I don't have it in my inventory. And this is about where I go, oh hey, maybe it's a key item. And there it is. That key of time key item was, when you start the game you get one of three items. Key of time, airship, or four artifacts. Oh, I took the key of time. It uh, lets you unlock... Uh, lets you unlock items as the game goes on. Alright, get out of the way. Move. And there's a goblin to grab. Mm, checking all the things to rob from people, like a good JRPG guy. There's that foreign, that's the map, so we can just warp right here. Thousand gold. Although I think I gave him 800 as a deposit, if I'm reading that right, which makes it a rather less of a payout. And there's just me making sure I didn't miss anything. Um, the kid said something about dropping something by the lake, and I was wondering if it was there, so I'm running around hitting the space bar to uh, see if something pops up. And this is me going to warp to Loughton, and then remembering that I can't do it there. You have to do it on the overland. That's from an artifact. For some reason, to go here, it's the warp stone. Or the spell. Everywhere else, it's map. And so we're talking to everybody, trying to find who the hell it is that wants the mysterious, suspicious package. And this guy won't shut up. And... ah, yeah. Just looking at seeing the inventory. That cheap wine is for the quest I didn't do. I don't know where I'm doing. I'm... I'm lost. Uh, do you want it? Nope. Do you want it? Nope. I'm not sure what healing water does. I'm wondering if that resurrects. I should check that out. And I, so I think, oh, well, there's suspicious people down in the well. Let me go down here. Um, and randomly catch a goblin. But, no. See, what you can do here is if you want to go through the game with only one person, you can sell off the three people, uh, decreasing amounts of money. Like 1,800, and then I'm guessing about 600. Um, and then you can run through the game with only one character. It's permanent. Found that out the hard way. Shop keeps. And then, as it's, aha! Of course. Little delivery quest can't be easy. And then I decide to go into the castle to turn in those pesky goblins. And you can see the lawn walk that I cut out earlier. 
Part of the reason I cut it out is because I got lost in the castle and went to the wrong place. Yep. Beep. And these doors. Yep, that's an artifact. That's what it looks like. Unfortunately, this is all the information you get. So what's going on here is I am pulling up a quick guide to see what it is because if Mike picks it up, Mike's the only one that can use it. That's why he has the teleport home power because I picked it up with him without thinking about it. He's the only one that can use the teleport home power, so if he's dead, we can't teleport home. Of course, now that we have the maps, I suppose that doesn't much matter. And the reason Mike the Warrior has five magic points is because I burned a elixir of magic to give it to him. And as it turns out, no reason not to just give it to him. This is me uh, pulling up the name so I can pull up the chart so I can see what it is. It's that or save scum, and I don't want to save scum. Artifact yet. There it is. All it does is summon a fight. Which I suppose is good for grinding. And we are almost done here. I believe I just go out and use it. And that's it. But down, out. Not sure what I was doing there. So, beep, beep. Throw a victory. Starts a fight. And that's about it. So. I am going to cut the recording, let the last bit play out, and I will catch you all later. Have a good one.